you are about to embark on a journey where you'll turn this into this, a full-fledged, beautiful database application. Don't worry if you've never coded a thing before. All that is about to change. First, open Microsoft Access. For this project, you want to select Blank Database, only clicking once, then give the database a name. Access may default to saving the database on the Microsoft OneDrive. If you do not wish to save to that location, be sure to click the small folder icon and choose another location. Once you're ready, click the Create icon to begin. We are then shown a screen about as exciting as a half-eaten banana, with a database table unceremoniously already opened for us. Let's close this table for now by clicking the small X on the right side of the window. Near the top of the window, click the word Create to see various options in the ribbon. Click the icon titled Table Design. Strangely enough, this opens the design view of a brand new table. For nearly all your database tables, you'll want to create a primary key. In the first row under the heading of Field Name, simply type the word ID, then press Tab on your keyboard. You'll notice the cursor move to the second column. Either use the drop-down box or simply press A on your keyboard. You'll want to choose the data type of Auto Number, which is a great choice for a table's primary key. Now, move your mouse up to the large icon titled Primary Key and click it. Congratulations, you're well on your way to world domination. Now, click in the second row under the Field Name column. Since this table is going to be about book genres, we'll want to know the name of the genre. So, let's call this field Genre and give it a data type of short text. The short text data type is generally limited to roughly 255 characters, which is plenty enough. Now then, to save this table, we can click the small save icon at the top left of the access window, or if we're too legit to quit, we'll click Control S on our keyboard to save. Give the table a proper name, usually prefixed with the letters TBL, and click OK. One thing to keep in mind is that we are not actually inputting data at this moment. We're only defining the table. Each field name entry we create becomes a column of data whenever we begin entering data. In fact, let's do that now. There are actually multiple ways to do so. You can right-click the Window tab and select Data Sheet View, or you can double-click the table's entry in the Object Browser to the left. If that doesn't suit, you may click the large View icon in the upper left, selecting Data Sheet View, or click the small table-looking icon to the far lower right. Now we are in the table's data view and can begin entering data. Notice the two columns, ID and Genre. Those are the same two columns we designed earlier. You may also notice a third column, titled Click to Add. This allows you to add more columns to your table, as if you were designing it, without actually entering design mode. For some, this feature is about as welcome as a weak old hangnail. To disable it, click File in the top left, then select Options in the lower left. Click the option called Current Database, and then uncheck the option Enable Design Changes for Tables in Datasheet View. Click OK to return to our table. You may notice that pesky column is still around, not a problem. To essentially reset our database without closing it, click the Database Tools option at the top, then select Compact and Repair Database. Now we can double-click our genre table to return to Data Sheet View. Now we can start entering data by simply typing in various genres. 
Notice that you cannot modify the ID column. That is because it is an auto number data type and can never be modified. If for any reason we need to add more fields, we can return to design view and add them there. For now, let's stick with just the genre field and enter in two or three genres. Whenever you start entering or changing data in a table, notice the small pencil icon to the left. This indicates the row or record is being modified. As soon as you move to another row, the data is saved. There is no need to manually save the data. Conversely, if you press escape on your keyboard, you will undo any changes you've made to the record you're currently editing. Now let's create two additional tables, one for authors and one for locations. The locations table will be much like the genre table. Create an auto number ID field, make it the primary key, and then create a short text location field. Save the table, and then fill in a few random locations you might save books, whether physical or electronic. The author's table will be slightly more complex. As before, start table design and create the auto number ID field and set as primary key. Instead of just one additional field, we'll add three, one for a last name, a first name, and a year of birth. Make the name field short text, but for the birth year, set the data type to number. Fill in as many authors as you wish, then close the table. Stop and pat yourself on the back. You've just managed to create three tables in Microsoft Access. Before we continue to the really good stuff, let's do a short review. Right now, we should have three different tables, one for genres, one for locations, and one for authors. The tables for genres and locations are very similar. Both have an auto number, ID, primary key field, and each table also has a single short text field type to describe either the genre or the location. The author's table has the typical ID primary key, but it also has three additional fields. Two of these fields are for first and last names and are of type short text, while the third is for birth year and is of type number. As for how much data to actually enter into each table, Go hog wild and enter as many entries as you wish, but enter at least two records for each table. There are also limited options to customize the look of an access table. Remember, access tables are not Excel spreadsheets, although they look similar. Still, you may decide the font is not of your liking, or perhaps it's too small. If you click on the home menu at the top, you will notice some formatting options on the right side of the ribbon. You should see a font style, size, and color selections, etc. You may also notice you cannot format only specific rows or columns. It's all or nothing. If, after you've adjusted your font size, you notice the columns are too small, here's a quick way to auto-size them. Move your cursor to the right edge of the column you wish to resize you'll notice that cursor changes into a cross-type icon. Double-click, and the column will automatically resize. Wow, you must be a wizard. Finally, let's create our last table. This table will be about the books we own. As before, create table design, primary key. Next, create a field called title and make it a short text data type. The next field is much different than any so far, so pay attention. Name the next field starting with the letters FK, then Location, then ID at the end. Using this naming convention, we know this field is special. 
Using the data type drop-down list, select Lookup Wizard. This is one of the very few wizards we use at Gate. If you don't exactly understand what's happening, don't worry. Future episodes will explain this thoroughly. Click Next on the window that appears. Now, highlight the Locations table, then click Next. You'll see two fields on the left. We'll want to select both of those and shift them over to the right. You can either double-click each field name to move it back and forth, or use the double arrow buttons to move them all at once. Grab both fields, then click Next. On this screen, we want to decide the ordering of these items when we view them in a list. Click the first drop-down box and select Location, then click Next. On this screen, simply click Next. We're on the last screen. Put a check mark in the Enable Data Integrity box. Make sure the Restrict Delete Radio button is active and click Finish. If you haven't saved the table, you'll be asked to do so. Let's make one more lookup field for our table. While in design mode for our books table, type the letters FK, then genre, then ID. Like we did with the FK location field, select the lookup wizard for the data type. This time, we want to select table genres. Grab both fields as before, order by genre, enable data integrity, etc. Now, let's enjoy some fruits for our labor. Enter data sheet view for our books table and start entering books. Notice that any previous entries you had entered into the genre or locations tables are now available as drop-down selections in this table. These fields are what we call foreign keys. They are primary keys from one table referenced in another table. You may be thinking to yourself, I thought the primary keys were numbers, but these aren't numbers. We'll cover that in future episodes. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope this episode was beneficial. If you found this useful, please consider subscribing to support this channel. It costs you nothing, but it means a great bit to me. See you next time.